It's okay. It's not okay. You know what this means. It's the end. Make it stop. Bring me back. I'll see you in your nightmares. You gave me the kryptonite. I never thought you'd use it. I hoped I'd never have to. I'm sorry, Kara. For what? I couldn't save him. Coming here was the mistake of your life. I'll be able to go into your brain, even if you're wide awake. My brain's not a nice place to be. But you're different. You don't have any special powers. Oh, I have one, Johnny. I never give up. Who is this? Hey, Batman, it's me, Velma. Velma Dinkley? How did you get this number? Oh, I hacked it off your utility belt when you were threatening Shaggy and Scooby earlier. Hmm. Run a profile on this woman. Her name's Mary Flynn. Sure. Is she in some kind of trouble? It's the Joker. And maybe more. Something about this woman doesn't add up. It was all a lie. There's nothing wrong with you. Nice of you to say, but you of all people should know, there's plenty wrong with me. I've been thinking lately about you. You and me. About how this is going to end. About who will end up killing who. Perhaps you'll kill me. Perhaps I'll kill you. Perhaps sooner, perhaps later. You know that, don't you? I just, I need to know, for when that time comes, that I've made a genuine attempt to talk things over, to try and avert the inevitable, just once. Listen to me. This is life and death, mine or yours. Our relationship, it's fatal. You will be forgotten, Joker, because of me. I got cheated out of my childhood. I know what that's like. You do, don't you? I'm dying very soon. Yes. Could you stay with me? I'm scared. I'll help you, but understand this. If you try anything, I'm taking you down too. We find Titan containers, we destroy them. Deal? <laughs> of course. And that's everything I know. Everything. Losing my patience. I can't control my friend here much longer. You better give us something we can use. Lucius, I've got a hostage situation. Three gunmen. I need to take them all out before they can react. Is it ready? Flexible plates over an MR fluid armor layer. You'll move faster, hit harder, and look scarier while doing so. Send it, Lucius, now. Already airborne, Mr. Wayne. What's this little toy do? Careful. It's an exosuit. It amplifies effort and increases endurance. And? When I tested it, it put too much strain on my heart. You'd let a little thing like a heart problem stop you from being Batman? I don't believe it. Look after him, Jim. Look after them all. You've been a good friend. The best I could ask for. Never again. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. On November 11th of 2022, the general public was informed of Kevin Conroy's passing. Now, if you don't know Kevin Conroy, you probably do. You might just not know the name. He is the most prolific voice actor to ever play Batman, along with one of the most prolific and famous voice actors ever, who brought a lot of legitimacy to voice acting in a time where it was something that was looked down upon, kind of... I guess I would say pe people tried to delegitimize the job and say like, well, it's not real acting and all this other stuff. People like Kevin Conroy came in and proved that completely wrong and blew that out of the water with a level of passion and commitment and interest in the character that he played. 
And he went on to not only play Batman in things like Batman the Animated Series, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, uh, Batman Beyond, honestly, a bunch of DVD and Blu-ray Batman movies as well, and even showing up in Batwoman as a live-action Bruce Wayne. But he also played the character in things like Batman the Arkham series. And he played all... Like, he was just an amazing person in general. I never had the uh, honor to meet him, but T did, who um, he met him at a convention and he signed a comic and stuff. And he always talked about how he was just one of the nicest people ever. He was, like, just very excited to interact with people, fans of the character. He was so down to earth and just a nice person. And Nate and I kind of wanted to talk about this today. I waited a few days to upload this video because the last thing I want to do and something I hate when people do is I hate when someone passes and everyone rushes to make a buck off of it. Mm -hmm. That genuinely makes me angry. Like how the minute Michael Jackson died or the minute Chadwick Boseman died, very different people, by the way. <laughs> but the minute like prolific figures like that died, everyone was on YouTube like, here's how this person made me who I am today. Please pay me, you know, like immediately. And I really didn't want to do that because I think Kevin Conroy was a very important person far beyond just his voice acting um, with the with the impact that he had on the world. Yeah, I just love how synonymous he is with Batman. Absolutely. Uh, and even to the point where people probably don't even fully know the extent that he really played Batman. Right. I mean, you, you just rattled off a bunch of stuff that he was in, but Batman the Animated Series is one of the most famous media pieces of Batman ever. And, and of DC, honestly. And of I, DC. And... It introduced a whole generation, I, I guess I would say multiple generations of kids to these characters. Yeah. And well, and even, even to the DCAU. One of the big discussions has always been, hey, we want the heart and soul of the things that happened in the, in the cartoons in live action when you do that. Yeah. And I think Kevin, he was one of the main reasons people say that. Right. Yeah, he... The way he was able to portray Batman, to me, went beyond just simply the the animated series Batman. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things I, I really liked about Kevin Conroy is he played Batman in so many different continuities that you really didn't fully know. I mean, you knew it was him, but he did it so well that you didn't. Like, the Arkham Batman... You just thought he was Batman. Well, yeah, and, like, the Arkham Batman is so much different than the animated series Batman, but yet Kevin Conroy was able to voice act both characters, and he was able to do it in a way that they both felt different, but it just was Batman. Right. I mean, like, the voice wasn't really different at all, but the way he portrayed Batman was different. Yeah, he was able to do a lot of emotions through voice, and, you know, what's interesting is... When people delegitimize voice acting, this is one of the funniest things to me because you have to be kind of an idiot to not realize how hard it is oh, yeah. to animate your voice into different things when you're not appearing on screen. Well, I'd, I'd say it's almost harder yeah. than uh, being like a regular actor because being a regular actor, you can actually get the emotion through your facial features mm -hmm. and your hand motions too. Voice actors don't get that. No. They have, they have to animate their character and portray emotion just in their voice. It's over, Darkseid. Even you must realize the folly of being a king without a kingdom. One Hellspore can turn an entire planet into a fire pit. What'll happen to Apocalypse when 500 go off simultaneously? Here's the deal. Release the girl and give your word you'll leave her alone. And they're not even always, like, a lot of the times the, the voice actor isn't the model used for character renders either. So, like, a lot of the times when they will, sometimes they are, but there's a lot of times where you'll have a voice actor and then you will have motion tracking on someone else and that person will be the body yeah. of the character mm -hmm. that the voice actor is playing. Right. Kind of similar to, uh, this is a bit of a weird comparison, but James Earl Jones, mm -hmm. that's actually an example of voice acting. He wasn't in the Darth Vader suit. Right. But he was the voice of Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. And you have to think that somebody else was playing the body in, you know, these movies while he was trying to voice that character yeah. through all this modulation and stuff and be able to get that emotion across. And Conroy is, is really the same way, not to draw attention to him, but just to draw attention to the craft. It's something that I think a lot of people over the years have really misunderstood 
And people like Kevin Conroy both through their hard work, dedication, and ability, along with their engagement with fans. You know, like, he, he was engaged on social media. He would talk to people. He would retweet things. I have never seen an instance in my life of Kevin Conroy thinking he or acting like he was more important than anyone. Yeah. To me, he was kind of the paragon of a good man in a lot of ways. He was never like the preachy guy on social media who would get mm -hmm. on and tell you this thing, this thing, this thing, this is why you're wrong. This is why you're an idiot. This is why my beliefs are right. This is why yours are wrong. This wasn't Kevin Conroy. What he was was a person who would engage with the fans he would engage with the material. He would show up and bring his A-game to absolutely everything. He didn't alienate people. He didn't isolate them, no matter who they were or what they were from. If they were a fan of his work or a fan of Batman, he was a fan of them. Right. That's cool. That's something mm -hmm. we don't see enough of, I think, in the industry, too. And I want to avoid making this overtly political or religious, but I do think that he did an amazing job in modern day avoiding what I like to call the... Um, the division syndrome type thing where mm -hmm. like you have to alienate certain fans or say like, well, this isn't for you. These people aren't welcome. This, you know, blah, blah, blah. Conroy wasn't about that. He was about unification. He was about bringing people together to enjoy iconic characters. Mm -hmm. That's something I really wish that we saw more of his attitude in other people, because it's something I think that he does, I guess I should say did sadly, um, mm -hmm. so much better than so many people online where I think, so many actors are are very tempted to and fall into the trap of, I have a voice, now it's time to, like, preach. I, I never saw that out of Conroy. He was always just very interested in the character, interested in the fans, and interested in making people happy. And, and I wish we saw more of that. Yeah, that was something that I always loved about him. Um, it reminds me of someone like Tom Holland, where they're just so innocent and they're just fun and happy and just happy to be who they are. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Kevin Conroy really personified that very well. Um, one of the things that I love about him actually was when I was growing up, I, I got interested in stuff like obviously the animated series. But the Justice League show was kind of my introduction into DC. And then I would watch the animated series and um, uh, Static Shock and, you know, other DCAU shows. But... The thing that I love is Kevin Conroy, when I was watching Justice League Green Lantern, was my favorite character. But I will say this, even from when I was a kid, I think Batman was probably the most solid character of the Justice League show. And I think a big chunk of that has to do with Kevin Conroy mm -hmm. and how he, he just played a great Batman. You know, something to speak to what you're saying that I love, there is a huge difference. If you want to see Kevin Conroy's range... Watch the first episode of Batman the Animated Series. Mm -hmm. Go watch the first episode of Batman Beyond. Right. It's night and day. Right. And I know there's always going to be the people who argue about characterization and stuff like that. I love that DCAU version of Batman mm -hmm. because... It's my favorite version of him. Me too. It's and it's, it's because of that range. You know, yeah. you, you can have young guy out there trying to do his best to Justice League, where you have, like, a hardened vigilante who's probably approaching 40, who knows he can't do it forever, so he's trying to set up a framework of other people who can take it on longer than him mm -hmm. in Justice League and stuff, to an old man with heart problems who feels like a failure because he can't get back out there and do stuff, who's just lonely right. in Batman Beyond, right. and feels like he alienated everyone he cares about. And Kevin Conroy is the reason that range worked. Mm-hmm. You know, he is the he's the vehicle by which that writing worked. Like, yeah. I, I don't think that would work nearly as well without him. No, I don't think so. I don't think it would. Because, like, you go from young to experienced to old, sad, you know, lonely <laughs> man. Right. To, like, even episodes of Batman Beyond, like the one uh, where, you know, he's a little bit younger again. You get to see that. Mm -hmm. And the differences in Unlimited. And even the differences when you see some of the uh, straight to Blu-ray movies, you know? In Batman Beyond, I played um, an older Bruce Wayne. He still had hope for the world. This Bruce Wayne, he's become so broken and so embittered by life that he sees no hope for the world.
If you people can't see the potential danger of an out of control Justice League, I don't belong here. Those are all, like you said, they're all different Batman. And even in the same canon, mm -hmm. he's able to play different Batman. Because Batman day one on the animated series, even though we don't see him day one, but, you know, it's day one of the animated series, that is not Batman Beyond Batman. Right. That's not Bruce Wayne in, in that show. Mm -hmm. But Kevin was able to portray that extremely well. And the way he could do it, too, with, like, making his voice sound younger or older was incredible. Yeah, that was pretty great. I don't even know how you do that. That is just nuts. Right. You know, and, and the, the amount of skill he carried through and the passion for the character. You know, he went to so many things he didn't need to go to. He went to local conventions for fun. Mm -hmm. Kevin Conroy was not broke. Do you think he really needed to go to that? No. He had no he just, purpose to, he wanted to do it for the fans. Yeah, he went because it was fun. He went yeah. because he wanted to meet people and have a mm -hmm. good time. That's actually where Team Adam was at a very much smaller convention. Because um, Minnesota and some other areas like that, you know, where we live, get very small conventions. He would even go to stuff like that. Yeah. I mean... And, That's unheard of. Well, yeah, because in, in the comic book industry and in the animation industry and stuff, and something I found, especially with anime voice actors um, in America that I've met which I'm not going to say names because I feel like that'd be tacky. A lot of the focus is just on make money. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to shows just to make a ton of money. All these people are annoying and you leave. Conroy never interacted with people like mm -hmm. that. And that's something that I think is really special and interesting because, you know, I know I said it before, but like that attitude of not thinking you're more important than anyone. That is something that I really miss in, in show business, you know, like it, I, maybe I'm maybe I'm over glorifying the past because it certainly had its own problems. Mm -hmm. But it feels like in recent years there's been this real push of like you're up there now, you're a god. <laughs> right. You know, like use your platform, well, they, voice everything. Yeah. You're more important than the the plebs under you. That well, wasn't Kevin. And they think they need to like shove their opinions and everything too. And, and well, but, and treat you like you're irrelevant. Well, yeah, exactly. Like, like, like basically the idea know. of like, you're just another person in the line. Right. Yeah, I'll sign your comic, but get out of my face. That wasn't Kevin Conroy. Mm -hmm. I think that that can't be stated enough. You know, guys like him and Chadwick Boseman, too, mm -hmm. they treated people with respect and dignity that I don't think we see in show business anymore enough. Yeah, there's there's a few people that do like, I, I know The Rock... Yes, he's, he's very down to he's earth. A, he's a people. genuine guy. Chadwick, Kevin, these are yeah. the kinds of role models that I think really matter to people because, mm -hmm. you know, younger people, especially, they see these people who are successful. You know, that that's a really good thing for them to see. And I think our culture is really infested with people. And I think it's come from a lot of different mm -hmm. um, genres of music and show business and stuff where people get way too big for their bridges. Yeah, one of my, kind of going off of that, one of my favorite things about actors, whether it's voice actors or live action actors, is when they're playing a character that obviously everyone loves, but then the actor realizes that and actually does something with it. Like I loved when, you know, like in the Avengers phase, when like uh, Chris Evans would dress up as Captain America and go visit hospitals. Yeah, or Johnny or Depp something. did something Yeah, or Johnny to Depp would do that with, with Jack Sparrow. Or even someone like uh, Mark Hamill. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he really personifies the character of Luke Skywalker. Actually, in fact, Mark Hamill has spent his entire life just being Luke Skywalker. He's also just a like, kind person. He is a very kind he, person. Even when I disagree with him, I never feel like he's a bad person. Oh, no, he's he's a great guy. Yeah. And, I, and that's the thing I love about him is I feel like I feel like he understands that there are people out there, whether you're kids or adults, that love Luke Skywalker. Mm -hmm. And to him, it to him, it's not just a role. To, to Mark Hamill, it never was just a role. It's it's who he is, and he's gonna show up to these random conventions. Mm -hmm. He's gonna show up to random things. He's gonna do whatever uh, to show off that he's Luke Skywalker because he's personifying that role. That's that's who I felt Kevin Conroy was. Yes. I felt like he he really took the character Batman and to him it wasn't just, oh, I'm just going to go voice act this character. To him it was, I'm Batman. Yeah. He recognized that especially kids mm -hmm. out there saw him as Batman. Yes. And they saw him as the iconic voice and the character behind him. And he realized that this can sound cheesy. He realized he had a big responsibility by picking to play that character in the first place. Yeah. And that's the thing that I that's the thing that I hate so much about actors 
when they play these iconic characters and then it's almost as if they don't care about them. Yeah. Like they just they go play the characters and then they move on with their life. This was not just a job to Kevin Conroy. Yeah, I think exactly. that's kind of what you're saying. That's what I'm like trying to was, get at. It was almost it's, a, a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Like he recognized this is who I am. Yeah. So he went to these small conventions and he met losers like T. Yeah, he's right. And so he was he able to like... still put on a, a nice face and be like, oh, yeah, you're important. And right. Even, exactly. even someone like T, I think that's a real right. hero. It's a... He's like, geez, is this a make a wish? <laughs> hey, how's it going? Wow, yeah, great guy here. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I completely agree. Like, he, you know, can I say something to you here, by the way? I don't want to make everything about me because I feel like that's tacky. It is all about you. No, absolutely. I'm a huge narcissist. Some people think that. <laughs> Um, I gotta lean into it for my brand. It worked right. for Kanye for a while. Yeah, so it doesn't work. Not for you. working right now. I just have to not say anything about a certain group of people. It <laughs> will be good. Um, no, but you know, with Kevin Conroy, he passed of cancer. And something I wanted to say about that that makes me just horribly depressed is that this takes so many people that are really good people, really interesting people who really care about the world. Mm -hmm. It just makes me really sad because my dad passed of of cancer. Uh, my dad actually passed of a very similar kind of cancer that Chadwick Boseman passed of. Mm -hmm. um, they both passed from that. And I remember that, I'm getting to a point with this, I remember when Chadwick was battling cancer, people, and some of the same people who, who idolize him now, who act like they didn't do this, they were online saying things like, oh, look at the crack panther, because he was skinny. Because he was going oh, through chemo okay. yeah. and stuff like that. Then mm -hmm. he looked uh, a little more frail because of it. And I don't think people realize how much goes into these battles with cancer and how courageous you have to be to wake up every day and fight it, even though it inevitably you know, <clears throat> took his life and it's taken the lives of a lot of people I cared about, my father and my grandfather and people like that. When you actually see, um, you know, what people go through, guys like Kevin Conroy, guys like Chadwick Boseman, they really did have to wake up and have the heart of a hero to fight that. Well, it's, and it's fight incredible. it, but also go to work and do this. Well, yeah, because uh, I don't believe Kevin Conroy ever really led on to the public that he had cancer. Yeah. It was a surprise to everyone when he mm -hmm. passed. And that's something that I think is interesting because just recently, you know, he was interacting with fans. Yeah. He was doing stuff. He probably knew he had cancer. Well, yeah. And he, and... Could, he could have very easily just shut everyone right. out and not done anything. But guys like him and Chadwick, you know, not to mm -hmm. just bring up Chadwick, but like they went to work they did their job because they you know why because they knew it was important to people do you really think that they were worried about the money no when they're when they're dealing with this most likely terminal thing mm -hmm. it's because they wanted to make a difference and do something right and i think that that's another thing we don't see enough of in the world there's so much focus on money and getting paid for the job and all this crap that's all temporary but like the mark that these guys you know the mark that they leave on people is not you know, mm -hmm. there will be someone in a hundred years watching Batman, the animated series, who's just as affected by Kevin Conroy's performance as we were. And we will be gone. Right. That's really powerful. That's that's a, a special thing. He's leaving a lasting legacy. The Batman character, his drama, his journey, his mission in life resonates with people. They love him. There's an authenticity to him because he's... He's, he's damaged. He's a damaged man. Yes. Instead of letting life crush him, he's trying to save the world. <laughs> no, I never thought I'd get a chance to do it on camera because I was getting older and older and older. I was sort of aging out of Batman, you know. But luckily, I aged into old Bruce Wayne. We are all flawed. And eventually, we all get damaged by life. So it makes him that much more relatable because he's just like us. His mission is to is to leave the world a better place. It's such a noble cause. That's what we love about him. And we love his tenacity. He never gives up. No matter what life throws at him, he keeps coming back for more. Some of my favorite stuff he's done, obviously, we already we already talked about, but even just his ability to carry this character through stories and you know <laughs> Even his ability to carry this character in a story that wasn't necessarily that well done, like um, the the Killing Joke animated movie, mm -hmm. he was still a joy when he was on screen. He did a good job. Yeah, there I can't think of a single instance you can point to and be like, "Wow, Kevin really didn't bring his A game today." <laughs> right? What happened? It could have been better if he did this. <laughs> like that just didn't happen. You know, he he reminded me in a weird way of Michael Jordan where you bring your A game every time. The idea yeah, of like, yeah. hey, listen, 
no matter what, I'm showing up, I'm giving 110%. Mm-hmm. Every time. Even Batwoman, of all things. He himself, 110%. Well, I think it was, wasn't it Kobe that said, uh, that was asked, I think by his wife or something, that um, why why does he go out and play when he when he has a hurt leg or whatever? The, I don't remember what the case was. But Kobe said, uh, I go out there and play when I'm hurt because I know that some kids bought the tickets to see me play. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to sit out. Well, that's that's so the same. That's almost the exact word for right. one thing Michael Jordan said because he said. It might have been Michael Jordan that said it then. Okay, well, you're I'm, confusing people then. I am. I, I'm sorry. I, I remember someone said this and I thought it was Kobe. Well. But maybe it was Michael Jordan. Kobe had that philosophy a I lot apologize. too. I apologize. But they both had the same philosophy. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. That That is kind of, that's the personification that kind of Kevin Conroy brought to Batman. Do you have a favorite yeah. thing, by the way, that he did? Like, in terms of everything, I go really back and forth. Because, like, a vo- just voice acting? Or? Yes, like, in terms yeah. of what he, he did for voice acting. Because I think that one thing, and I know everybody talks about it, Mask of the Phantasm, the range yeah, he had, that was that crazy. Was one of my favorite lines of that is, like, you know, uh, when when he basically tries to go back on his promise and say, like, well, I didn't know I was going to be happy. I wasn't supposed to be happy mm-hmm. when he's being Batman and stuff. I thought that was really cool. It just doesn't hurt so bad anymore. Please. I need it to be different now. I didn't count on being happy. And I also yeah. loved, um, the you know, the concern in his voice, the fatherly figure that he had to play, the distant fatherly figure he had to play, in Batman Beyond. Mm-hmm. And you find out a lot more about that over the course of the thing, but at first, Terry McGinnis is an annoyance to him. Right. He's like, just get the hell out of my cave, you know? Yeah. And, and over time, you find out, you know, like, then he he brings Terry in because he's like, okay, well, you can be my hands and, and eyes and ears, and I will be in the cave, mm-hmm. and we will do this together. And then over time, one thing I really like is the bit of softening, even though there is, like, still this anger and upsetness over the course of that you know that show um where you start to see that he starts to care about terry as if he was his son Mm -hmm. you know i think that kevin conroy is able to portray that so well where he has he can do gruff he can do vulnerable he can do angry he can do depressed and sad um there wasn't anything this guy couldn't do yeah i mean one of the things that impressed me a lot about kevin conroy is his ability to play Batman in the Arkham games. Mm-hmm. Now, what I mean by that is voice acting a video game is a much different experience than voice acting a TV show. So, first of all, his ability to alter that aspect of it, I think, is pretty cool. And still hit the um, same height. And still hit the same, yeah. But yeah. the the other thing I was going to say is that Arkham Batman is a much different Batman. So it's like you watch you watch him in, you know, the animated series, Justice League, Batman Beyond, you know, all the other movies. And you kind of get the feel of like, oh, this is Batman. Yeah, cool. But then you play Arkham and he's a lot more of like a rougher kind of a, you know, a gruffier Batman. Uh, there's obviously very dark, like the games are pretty dark in general. Mm-hmm. But he personifies that so well. Like, I feel like I feel like he plays a dark Batman. You know Very good. You know what's really interesting about that, too, that you mentioned that I thought of is one of the things that's most interesting about Kevin Conroy's Batman in Arkham is when he talks yeah. and his silence. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of times where he's just silent. Mm-hmm. And so because of that, when he talks, it's because he has something important to say. Yeah. And I think that Kevin carried that very, very well. Because mm-hmm. he could have just, you know, when he showed up on screen, been like, Oh no, Joker, look out. Right. You know, like, and they could have had to be like, okay, Kevin, come on. Come like, on, but they didn't have to do that no. with him because he was like showing up. He was like, I'm excited to be this character, like mm-hmm. you said, and every day bringing his A game and, and willing to put his all into it. it it's crazy. You're right. That, that Arkham Batman is very different, similar mm-hmm. in Asylum. Mm-hmm. But then after they branch off from Asylum into just entirely their own thing. You know, just as much as Rocksteady and WB Games Montreal with Origins as well had to find their own way with that continuity, you have to think that Kevin Conroy had to find his own way with that voice to distinct it, or uh, I shouldn't say distinct it, like make it distinct from Batman the Animated Series. And people Mm -hmm. say, oh, that's Kevin Conroy's Batman. Yeah, they sound similar, but genuinely, if you listen to Batman Beyond, if you listen to the original Animated Series, 
Mask of the Phantasm, or if you listen to Arkham Knight, mm -hmm. those are not the same voice. And it's not no. just because he aged. Because mm -hmm. if it was just because he aged, it wouldn't make any sense because he was playing old Bruce Wayne a long time ago in Beyond. And he was able to do that and then go back to a younger Bruce Wayne, you know, approaching 40 or whatever in Unlimited and, mm -hmm. you know, in his 30s probably in, in Knight. It's it's just crazy to me. I know I've probably repeated myself a few times, but that that amount of it, yeah, it, it really shows off his his range yeah. very well. Miss me, monster or man, they both fall the same. There was no hope for this world. Life only makes sense if you force it to. You know, I actually did check this against any musical sounds. Computer still can't come close to pinpointing it. Hey, what's up, Doc? You have bats, Mr. Wayne. Common brown bats. They shouldn't pose a problem. As the weather gets colder, they'll move on. Appreciate the help, Doc. I'll return the favor next time you're raising funds. Bye-bye. One of my favorite uh, story arcs in the animated series, actually, was uh, the episode. It was a flashback, and it's the one where uh, you find out the story of Nightwing. But I just, I love that storyline too because you can see the pain and anger in dick and and what he's going through and his anger and frustration with batman that i thought was really he whoever the voice actor was i don't know off the top of my head did a really good job with that part but i also love the kevin conroy of batman in that uh, part episode the two or three part episode too uh because you can actually see him and his pain but he doesn't he doesn't portray it in a way that like he's just there bawling but you can definitely tell his voice acting, and he's hurt when Robin leaves. Mm -hmm. He's hurt because Robin's not just his sidekick. He he actually thinks of him as that's his son. Yes. How could you keep something like this from me? You weren't exactly honest with me either. But you told him. I thought we had the same goals. Things change. I changed. Robin, wait. And then obviously he gets a new Robin and, you know. And, and then he's he, like, I have a new son now. Right. I don't need you anymore. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I thought that was such a, I thought he did such a great job in that, that story arc of portraying a guy who needs to be serious and needs to be Batman. But you can tell that that really did affect him. That yes. the things that Robin said to him. They hurt. They hurt. And he probably realized they're true, but they still hurt. But he still needed to be that strong Batman character. And, and he did a good job of being a Batman with flaws. Yeah. His Batmans were not perfect. And something I don't like about Batman is that some people think that he's this perfect character who yeah. can do no wrong. He's like inhuman. He can take down any god. He has no emotional flaws. Something about the Batman that Conroy played is, yes, they were strong, but they had a human element to them. Yeah. They had weaknesses. Because he was a human. Mm -hmm. They had pain. They had problems. They had emotional issues. You know, I know I talked about Beyond Batman a few times, but someone like Arkham Batman, you get to see a Batman who has a very hard time letting people in. Mm -hmm. You know, and even though he does have these other heroes who help him, he has a very hard time relying on them, um, not because of them, but because of him. Yeah. And his failures. Mm -hmm. And you kind of find out that part of that is because of everything with Jason Todd and everything that's gone on in the past. And... You know, one of the saddest lines in Arkham Knight that I thought was really, really incredible, and it's overlooked because people dunk on the Arkham Knight identity, but it's when Bruce, when Batman, stands there and watches a flashback of the Joker torturing Robin, yeah. and he sees it because of the Joker being inside of him, you know, mm -hmm. this. and basically after that, Tim comes in. Everything Okay. You look spooked. I'm fine, Jason. Tim. You haven't done that for a while. Yeah. You know, and like you can hear like the pain in his voice. Something that Kevin delivered so perfectly and with so much pain and sadness. And it's so hard to un to overstate. It's easy to understate, but it's, it's so hard to overstate how much emotion had to go into this character and all these different things there. I think that a lot of people miss the point of Kevin's Batman, Batmen that have these flaws, have these emotional problems, have these issues opening up. And I think sometimes that people misunderstood Batman's problems and saw them as strengths when they weren't, mm -hmm. you know, a weakness of Batman is when he has a hard time opening up to other people. 
is when he has a hard time accepting help Mm -hmm. is when he has a hard time with women. You know, that's another example too. Like Bruce Wayne has a very hard time being intimate with some people. And Conroy was able to portray those weaknesses with a sense of dignity and humanity Mm -hmm. And to the point where I think some people misunderstood them as as strengths, but they were never meant to be that. They were meant to be human elements of Batman that Kevin Conroy was able to bring to light and really make, you know, uh, I don't want to say a spectacle of, but like make talking points of the character. Right. Yeah, that was something that was pretty remarkable also that he did. I think I like in the story arcs in uh, Mask of the Phantasm and other things like that, when Batman actually has a relationship with other female characters too, mm-hmm. because it's not something we actually see all that, that often with Batman. And when we do see it, it it's kind of awkward. Like it just is, mm-hmm. you know, I think of, I think of other things like Batman 89 or Batman returns or, you know, other, other live actions like that, where Batman's had relationships, even if they're brief, they're relationships that he's had with women and it's always kind of weird to like well, you look know, at. You it, know it, it won't last. Yeah, exactly. Because he's such a it's loner just weird. in a lot of ways. And But that was the thing that with Kevin Conroy is I always felt like these weren't weird. Right. I always felt like, well, he, you know, the way he's voice acting this character, it, it actually sounds like Batman is wanting a relationship and he's trying to make it work and he's doing a good job with this. I think that a lot of Batman adaptations suffer from James Bond syndrome. Yeah. And what I mean by that as a mega fan of James Bond is right. just the cultural idea of it's cool to get laid and leave. Right. That's and, a lot of them. And I think a lot of Batman adaptations are a little shallow when it comes to relationships because of that. But like mm-hmm. when, you know, whether you like this writing or not, when Batman is sitting in the cave and beyond and he sees a picture of Barb and he remembers, you know, them being intimate together. Yeah. From this is from Return of the Joker and some other stuff. You can tell he's sad. Mm hmm. You know, when he has when he remembers, you know, some of these these things that happened to him in the past, you can tell he's sad. There's such a misunderstanding of, oh, well, that's just the Kevin Conroy Batman. The Kevin Conroy Batman does not exist. The Kevin Conroy Batman is the Kevin Conroy Batman. It's so many different versions of the character, both in the same continuities and out, that all this effort and love went into. And to me, more important than all of this, all of this to me is just icing. Mm -hmm. The cake to me and what makes him special is, like I said about his kindness, Mm -hmm. what he wanted to put into the world with love and happiness and who he wanted other people to be. Because he didn't want them to be angry. You know, people who go out there and hurt all the time, he wanted them to be inspired and be happy and be willing to make a difference. And, you know, the world really lost somebody when they lost Kevin Conroy. And I know that any time a celebrity dies, to the family of those people, it's a horrible loss. And to a lot of fans of those people, it's a horrible loss. But a lot of the times I I see it and I just think, well, that's that's sad. Mm -hmm. But I don't know anything about this person. Right. Guys like Kevin Conroy, Chadwick Boseman, Paul Walker is another one I forgot to mention where, like, he was going out there, community outreach. He was just Mm -hmm. a really good guy who was doing his best in life. You know, guys like this, they, when they pass, it, I genuinely believe, is a loss for everyone. Yeah. The world loses someone very important and special in that, um, in, in that moment. But, you know, to not end on a sad note for me, I think it's really incredible that Kevin his his reach will live on long after he's gone. Like I said, you know, in 300 years, somebody could be watching Batman the Animated Series. Our grandkids will have passed away. Mm-hmm. And yet there will be people inspired by this man. Yeah, that was... That's a good thing you brought up there. I That's probably my favorite thing I like about Kevin Conroy, too, is... And I'm obviously sad about him passing, too, but... Characters like Kevin Conroy, characters like Carrie Fisher. Yes, um, that's char- another one. Characters like Kobe mm-hmm. when he passed, too. Uh, characters like that um, leave a void in people's lives. And the thing that kind of bothers me is I feel like there are characters out there, uh, or actors, I mean, or, you know, sports stars or whatever, that when they pass, everyone jumps on the bandwagon. And they, they instantly are the greatest fans ever. And like, I, you know, this was my favorite person of all time. Yeah. And I, I hate that. That makes I, me so mad. That's why we yeah. didn't release this right away, by the right. way. Right. 
Because we didn't want to appear like that. Well, yeah, because it's, it's douchey, it's tacky, and it's... And, you know, well, and you're just jumping on the, the hype. Well, you mentioned, too, the people who will attack people the, the instant they pass, too. Yes. And, like, yes. they'll bring up some allegation the moment they die. Yeah, because they know they're not going to defend like they, it. It's they, just they, it's pathetic. 1201, they're like, I better prepare my tweet. <laughs> right. You know, it's that's, it's, that's ridiculous. It's too. stupid. But when people die that are not... What am I trying to say? That are impactful to yeah, everyone when and, people like, they die have, like, that, presence. Yes. When people die like Kevin Conroy, Kevin Con Kevin Conroy uh, affected an entire DC community. Mm -hmm. Carrie Fisher affected an entire sci-fi community. And this isn't even it's, you know thinking about the people they affected in their own life. How many people? You know, I, I saw Mark Hamill react to Conroy's passing, and it, it was really sad. And he talked about how he saw him as a brother because he worked with him on and off his yeah, entire life. Yeah, he was life. Joker. <laughs> yeah. Right. And he, and he worked with him so much, and yeah. they got to know each other very well. Mm -hmm. I think people forget that these these people, they don't just have an impact on us. Right. They have such an impact on people in their personal life, which, yes, they do have, mm -hmm. even though they seem larger than life. Well, and they have, they have an impact on other communities, too. Yes. Like you said, with Mark Hamill. Uh, which, which which Mark Hamill is in the DC community too. But anyways, when people like this die, it do, it doesn't just affect the community that they're in. Right. It leaves a hole in everyone. Mm -hmm. And that that's that that's the thing that's so sad to me about Kevin Conroy passing is, I see this guy as this guy was Batman, for so many different people. Yes. And whether you're a big superhero fan or not, it doesn't really matter. I guarantee. Almost anyone, everyone out there has seen a Batman thing. Mm -hmm. And now maybe the only Batman thing you've seen is 89. But Kevin Conroy is an image of Batman. Mm -hmm. And Batman is such a big household name. Well, so, and Kevin Conroy, I want to say too, sorry to like keep adding on to this. That's okay. I was done with my point. So, Well, Kevin Conroy, I wanted to say brought it back. Yes. Every time yes. there would be a... A live action adaptation of Batman, which I've enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Whenever there would be the Christian Bale, or there would be the Michael Keaton, or there would be the whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Conroy brought it back and and reminded people of like, hey, there's this Batman, right? You know, and that's not to say that if you like '89, which I do, mm -hmm. or you like the Dark Knight continuity, which I do, that somehow they are lesser than that. But they're very different. Mm -hmm. And Conroy was able to keep coming back and keep showing people new sides of Batman right. that didn't need to be. You know, he never copied people. Yeah, like, he was just his own thing. Like, look at him. Do you really think when, you know, after The Dark Knight, in the times he voiced Batman, he wasn't trying to be Christian Bale's Batman? No. That's just not something he did. No. He had his own unique identity in everything he did, and I think that's really special. And, you know, thinking about it right here... Um, Maybe it's because I'm a little emotional. I deal with like a lot of depression issues and stuff. But when I first found out about this and also talking about this, it kind of took a lot for me not to cry mm -hmm. because of just how much this person impacted me. And and the big thing that Batman taught me that I think is more important than anything else, and it's the thing that Kevin Conroy's Batman's taught me, mm -hmm. I think is important to mention, is that you know, it's okay to deal with things like depression. Mm -hmm. It's okay to wake up every day and have problems. Like, if you watch Batman the Animated Series, especially later on, or Justice League, or beyond, and you don't think Batman deals with depression, I don't know what, you're, what, you, what you have. I would like some of that. Because <laughs> right. that Batman had problems. He did. You know, and to, and to show that vulnerability inside of it's okay to be imperfect and keep fighting. Um, that's something I think that the world needs more of because we we don't see that we don't get to see vulnerable people in fact when you're a man especially and this is me mainly talking to young men i guess um i'm sure it, it, you know there's there's probably a version of this for women too mm -hmm. but for young men especially if you show emotion people try and imply like you're weak that's not what being a man is especially and that's not what being a human is and i think that that applies to women too because i think there are a lot of women who are taught, sadly, that in order to be strong, you have to be a man. Right. And and the characters that Kevin Conroy brought to life helped teach me that. Helped teach me that when someone cries, it's not because they're weak. Mm -hmm. It's because they're human. When somebody has problems, it's not because it's always their fault. It's because life isn't perfect and it hurts really bad sometimes. 
Um, and sometimes we lose people like this that really matter. But what Kevin Conroy taught me was that even when you lose people like this, like my dad, um, or this might be a weird example, my cat, because I had my cat for 18 years almost, mm -hmm. you know, who died of, of, she had a similar cancer actually too, which caused organ failure or my grandpa, you know, you could very easily just say, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'm done with all of this. It hurts too much. It's it's not worth it. People like Co Kevin Conroy, I was going to call him Convin Kenroy. <laughs> People like Kevin Conroy and I guess his evil twin Convin Kenroy, <laughs> you know, they help teach me that it's okay to hurt and it's okay to get back up and, and fight. And, you know, I can't imagine the amount of impact Kevin Conroy has had on, on the world. I've gotten probably a couple dozen messages over the course of doing YouTube. And I just make dumb videos about like video games and, and toys and comics and stuff like that and movies. Right. And I've gotten some messages over the course of that where people say, Hey, something you said really affected me. I was going to end my life mm -hmm. and I didn't. And I've never understood that. Cause to me, the stuff we talk about is just fun, dumb stuff to have fun. Right. <laughs> now take, take that magnify something like that by a trillion. And that's who Kevin Conroy was. You know, how many things did he say? Mm -hmm. How many things did his Batman do that saved people's lives in real life, that made them realize that they could live, that made them realize that life was worth living and it was worth fighting and it was worth keeping going and, and to never stop fighting, um, you know, to your mm -hmm. to, to your very last breath. And that that's who Kevin was. That's how he lived and that's, that's how he passed, too. He passed fighting, you know, fighting cancer and, and fighting to be a good person. Yeah. And I think that's pretty incredible. Yeah, I think that's something that, that's why it bothers me so much when actors don't get into their characters, because uh, to someone out there, the Daniel Radcliffe Harry Potter is like everything to them. Or even to like someone out, yeah, James or, Bond. Or even like Bond or Jack Sparrow. Now, Johnny Depp does a good job with that. But, right. you know, to someone out there, the Jason Momoa Aquaman is the best thing ever, like seeing Aquaman was the reason they didn't end their life. And that's, and that's why when a character, that's why when an actor brushes it off, it really bothers me. Cause yeah. it's like, cause I'm thinking of movies and shows and video games and everything I grew up with. And there are a lot of examples. I'm not going to get into them of actors that have kind of brushed off their character. Yep. And to me, or, I, or later on, they just say like, no, I hated that. It was stupid. Yeah. Or I just did it. Exactly. For money. And like, and that, that pisses me off because mm -hmm. it's like, okay, but to you, that might've been nothing, but to me, that was everything. Yeah. And that's, and that's kind of piggyback off in your point. We're going to wrap this up, obviously, but well, I don't think um, it matters how long this is. This is an important video. It is a very important video, but okay. it's kind of picking back off your point. That was, that was something that was really great about Kevin Conroy is he understood that he understood that concept that this is this is everything to someone and even if it's just one person this this batman is everything to that person mm -hmm. and to me that's that's why it's worth doing it you know and this could be in any aspect of someone's life you could go into politics and the things you do in politics the laws you create and everything even if they affect one community that one community's lives are changed. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's why it bothers me so much when people, they're in it for money. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, okay, but you're wasting that spot. Like someone could be in there and actually want to make a difference in the world. You know, something you said that I think really resonated with me here, maybe to you that was nothing, but to me that was everything. Yeah. You know, that was the thing that I got up for. Mm -hmm. How many days in life, Bond is such a good example Genuinely, Nate, because I know that you dealt with depression more, I would say, as, as a, a teenager a little mm -hmm. bit. A lot of people do, even than you do now. Um, how many days were there for you, you know, where you got up and one of your big highlights was coming home from school to play Goldeneye? No, that was pretty much every day. Right, and that was... That, like, in, that in Battlefront on the computer were my two favorite things. And, you know, like, to some people, that's dumb. Right. Oh, Goldeneye was dumb. But to you, that was everything. Yeah. That mattered to you so much, and that carried you through bad days. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it can be um, put into words how many people Kevin Conroy was uh, that for, mm -hmm. was that person for, that, you know, think of all the kids who came home without parent parental figures, from every background, you know, who would come home and they would have absent fathers or absent mothers or, 
you know, uh, uh, maybe they got hit or Mm -hmm. they got treated poorly. I know like my, my wife, um, Jill had some very bad experiences in her personal life, you know, with family and, and friends and other people Mm -hmm. where, you know, her coming home to play video games or her coming home to watch a cartoon was one of the things that kept her going. Yeah. You know, it kept, kept her interacting with the world and kept her from shutting down. And how many people, you know, not to compare traumas and stuff, but how many people have had it even worse than that or have had, you know, just the, the worst life possible. But, you know, to them, seeing Kevin on screen or hearing Kevin on screen, I should say, and hearing a hero mm-hmm. reminded them that it was worth living. Mm-hmm. That's that's it will it can never be put into words, you know, what people like that do and what their stories speak to, you know, the story of a person who can just be at heart a human, but in action, such a massive hero. Those things are incredible, and I don't think anyone could ever put into words the impact that you can have as a person through these stories. I don't know if you made it this far. If if you did... <laughs> We applaud you. Uh, we appreciate you very much. And if you fell asleep and you're just waking, waking up right now, you're just waking up right now. You should play like the George Lopez theme. Oh. The people who are just waking up. Because oh, yeah, you always wake up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I, I, I don't want to get sued, but uh, I got enough copyright strikes. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. You know, I'm, I'm very interested to read your thoughts. You know, we really respect Kevin Conroy. We didn't want to release this right away because we didn't want it to piggyback off of his passing, it really makes me angry when people do that. Um, when the second someone passes, they're the biggest fan of them ever, and they rush to make money off it and stuff. Right. That makes me really angry, so I, I never want to be that person. Um, but, you know, I, I, I'm i very saddened today by the whole thing. I'm interested to hear your thoughts below. I do want to say, if you enjoyed this video, you know, please leave a like and subscribe because it does help our channel out a lot. We appreciate you very much and we hope you'll come back for more videos in the future. Just this whole thing's really bummed me out and, um, you know, really made me sad. But Kevin, he will live forever in what he did. And I also truly believe, like, from, with all of my heart from everything I've read about him and and seen about him, that he's in a better place, genuinely. That he's not just gone, that he is still alive. Um, I believe in heaven. Yeah. So rest in peace. You you matter to a lot of people. Thanks for watching this video and have a fantastic day. And as always, everyone, stay shui. And there's this wonderful sense of intimacy that people have with Batman as if they know him on a personal level. And it's unique for Batman. It's not like that for any of the other superheroes. And my feeling is that's true because of all those superheroes, he's the only one who's actually not a superhero. Think about it. He can't fly. He can't see through walls. He's a man. He's a human being. He's like you and me. In fact, he's a very flawed man. We are all flawed. And eventually we all get damaged by life. So it makes him that much more relatable because he's just like us. You don't have to be a superhero to want to give to your family, your friends, to leave the world a better place. You don't have to have superpowers to be tenacious in your goals in life. All you have to do is try, is to care enough to try, to make the world listen to you, to give to the world. Because the world needs you. It needs Jenna. It needs Kevin. It needs all of us.